Hi everyone, welcome to the Medical Laboratory Science Info Session. Um, the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam. And now I'd like to introduce um, Andre Perrot, our program head, who will be doing the presentation and program overview. We also have a special guest speaker, and at the end there's time for a Q&A. I welcome you to uh, put your thoughts in the chat, questions um, as we go along. And now over to you, Andre. Hi everyone, um, welcome to uh, today's information session for the Medical Lab Science Program. Um, as Julie noted, my name is uh, Andre Karen, and I'm the program head uh, for this program. We also have here um, sort of another poll question. It's more of a, an interesting FYI for, for those uh, not in, um, familiar with the with the med lab science profession, but um, this is um, an indigo coat, and it's a it was designed for an awareness campaign for the medical lab science profession, um, and printed in microscopic um, indigo type are the names of the lab tests performed each day in Canada. Um, so to the human eye, it looks like uh, the indigo color lab coat. But if you actually look closer, um, you're going to see that there's a bunch of critical tests um, run each day that are um, that are imprinted on this uh, gown. Um, so I guess the poll question for you uh, then is here. So printed in microscopic font on this lab coat are the names of the lab tests performed each day in Canada. How many lab tests do you think are printed on this coat? Well, it, so far, it looks like we've got a pretty good um, number leaning towards 1.2 million. Um, so that, in fact, is the correct answer. So there is 1.2 million tests um, that are performed each day here in Canada, and they are printed all in this uh, coat. And again, um, the CSMLS designed this indigo coat as a symbol of pride for the profession and all the professionals across Canada for their work um, in this field. Uh, next slide. So here you can actually see all of the little tests printed out. Um, next slide. So here we have a video, um, which I'm going to share with you on my screen. And the, this video was produced by WorkBC uh, here in BC, and it uh, does a deep dive into what the medical lab technologist does, um, kind of looks at a day in the life of somebody who is doing this work. Our next career plays a vital role in the field of medical science. We're in the lab today to meet a medical lab technologist. Hi. Hi, I'm Jody. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's get a lab coat on and get you started. Great. My name is Jody Simmons. I'm a medical laboratory technologist, and we're at the Dawson Creek and District Hospital Lab. Medical laboratory technologist works in the lab. They run patient samples, blood and body fluids. Uh, they're tests that are ordered by a doctor, and we run them on instruments, and we make sure that those results are accurate and precise before we release them to the doctors. A typical day would involve coming in and waking up all our instruments, and then we would have to pull quality control material to make sure that our instruments are running correctly. We would be doing any maintenance, like pulling apart the instrument and cleaning it before we would want to run any patient samples. What is this machine? They were looking at the inside of a chemistry analyzer. So when someone, for example, comes in the hospital with a heart attack or a suspected heart attack, mm -hmm. this is actually one of the instruments we use to see if there's been damage. So you're always learning about new instruments. Your day is always different. Your day is never the same. You might be learning a new instrument, a new technology. In a small lab like this, we are required to draw blood sometimes. So we'll draw the blood and bring it back to the lab. We're looking at tubes, and I'm going to tell what this person's blood type is by using my reagents and these tubes. So if you're an A pause patient, or if your blood type is O, I'll be able to tell from these from these tests. Okay. 
you're putting drops in tubes and you're using pipettes and small equipment and you're doing maintenance, so it's good to be able to work with your hands. It's good to be very organized, so you can organize your workflow and compartmentalize because you have priority specimens as well. You might get pulled from one thing and there's a stat that comes in and it's a lot more. Okay, everybody see the med lab science slide? Okay, awesome. Great, thanks, Julie. Um, all right, so continuing on. Um, so from that video, what uh, you would have seen is a little bit more, like I said, a day in the life of what a lab technologist does. Um, and one of those things um, that they do talk about in the video is that we that the lab technologist uses a variety of um, complex instruments and they analyze tissue, blood, body fluids, and, and it's all part of that diagnostic and treatment procedure. And it's really important because all of our grads, we play a critical role um, to ensure that the patients get the right treatment and, and support the, and the healthcare that they need uh, here in BC and all over Canada. And actually one of these, this image here is our student, is one of our student labs, uh, the histology lab where we have a group of students working on a couple uh, uh, assignments uh, in this space. Uh, next slide. All right, so just really high level, uh, we have a program overview. It's a two and a half year program. It's full time diploma. There's you're going to have an opportunity to have on campus lectures as well as you're going to have clinical labs. Um, so uh, what it ends up happening is you do all of your didactic training here at BCIT. So you're going to get a chance to learn the theory. You're going to get a chance to practice in the labs um, uh, here at BCIT. And then you move on to a workplace um, uh, site out in the clinical. And that's a 35 week placement. You're going to work with a preceptor. Um, on uh, patient samples um, on a more direct level and learning level. Um, so it is a great way to sort of learn, practice here at BCIT, and then employ those skills um, in the real working environment. And again, obviously you will be under uh, a preceptorship as well when you're there. So that's kind of how the program is designed. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> All right, so some fun facts. Um, what do we got here? So we um, obviously there's a very large demand for the medical lab uh, science profession. Um, right now, all of our grads are getting employed. So as soon as they graduate from the program, they've got um, employment right away. We even have acknowledgement from the ministry uh, that we are to expand the program. So not only are we um, we've got our intake, we also know that we're going to be uh, looking at taking on more. Uh, also, uh, something you may not know is that um, not only do we work in hospitals and community labs, private clinics, there's also blood bank, there's research, there's all sorts of different fields that people um, can go into uh, once they've taken this diploma program. Um, and just kind of a, it's a bit of a throwback to 2020, but it's still, still relevant today. Um, um, the Prime Minister of Canada did acknowledge the MLT profession sort of on a nationwide scale. Um, to in our role in effectively managing the response to COVID-19. So all of those tests that you're getting done or have had um, has been somebody within our uh, within the MLT group. So it has been a really good experience in learning about it and also being a part of that process and helping. A couple other things to mention. Uh, we are, um, I guess, one of the third largest programs in the School of Health Sciences. Uh, we are going to be implementing a new program map. Um, so the date here says 21, but we're actually going to be starting that this fall. So September 2022 is when we're going to be rolling out our new map. Um, in addition to that, we're also going to be moving into a new health science center. So there's a lot of things happening within the program, both growing in size, um, uh, developing a new program map, as well as moving into a new building. So lots, lots to experience here in the next little while. Um, we are uh, a hands-on learning environment, so true to BCIT culture, um, you're going to have a blended learning environment. Some of it's going to be online, most of it's going to be in labs and lectures, and then you're going to have that clinical rotation. 
Um, the way uh, the new map is designed, uh, you're going to have four uh, terms at BCIT, four didactic terms, and then you'll have one clinical experience at the end, a 35-week clinical. Uh, next slide. So clinical placements, clinical practicum, how does it work and all of those things. So you will definitely, once you're in the program, you're going to get a lot more information on sort of the details on how everything works. Uh, but what I can tell you right now is that we have placements across the province, both on the, uh, on the island, lower mainland, and in the interior. Um, so we do have affiliations with those uh, regions uh, for our students. So we get all sorts of students coming in from the interior, the island, lower mainland, applying for this program. And often when they do their clinical, they either go back to their um, regions uh, where they applied from, or sometimes they like to move around to get a new experience. But that's basically how it works. Um, when students are in the program, uh, they, we do give them an opportunity to give a preferred choice of where they want to do their placement. Um, so we use a computer uh, information management system that collects that information from students. So they get their uh, a few choices, and then it's going to run an algorithm that's been programmed to optimize where they go and ideally get at least one of their top choices. So that's kind of how the placement process um, unfolds. Uh, I do have to caveat that it's not a guarantee that you'll get one of your sites but um, we do try to run that system to optimize it and get as many people as their preferred options as, as much as possible. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for this one. You can move to the next one. So as I mentioned, lots of job opportunities right now. The career outlook is really high. All of our graduates right now, uh, we have 100% employment um, as soon as students complete the program and they challenge the national exam, then um, we do have 100% at this point. And as I mentioned earlier, there's um, lots of room now for expansion and for retirement. So the, the profession is growing in the province of BC. Um, what else can I mention? The other thing uh, to kind of keep in mind is um, most MLTs are gonna start in the hospitals or private clinics, so such as Life Labs or Valley Medical. Um, they're going to be working in core labs or high volume automated testing areas as typically is where they start. But again, uh, that could change in the next few years. Um, the job, it does require precision, technical skills and analytical thinking. So that's kind of the um, sort of, I guess, the uh, potential uh, typical candidates that apply to the program. Um, you'll enjoy, again, a professional level salary starting around uh, $31 an hour. And again, uh, with this program and having that national certification, you do have the opportunity to live and work anywhere in Canada. So that does allow you to, to travel if you do need to. And also for those who like, you do get to use specialized uh, high-tech equipment. So as I mentioned, we had to do a lot of upskilling to get lab technologists using the new PCR techniques for COVID testing. So um, lots of opportunities for people out there who wanna get them. Uh, next slide. All right, so uh, we just wanted to capture this photo for you just so that you see that it is uh, a tight knit community. There's, um, you'll always have a chance to be a student and to be a trainer. So just kind of think of it that way. So here we have a photo of one of our alumni students, Jackie, teaching uh, Charlie uh, in the chemistry lab. Um, he was a student at one time, he's now the preceptor and he's working with our students. So we just wanna highlight that, um, that you will be a student, you will be a trainer and that uh, it is just part of that uh, uh, community of professionals. Um, so with that, our next slide, I think is a good segue to talk to a current student. <laughs> so Joey, um, Julie, were you gonna introduce or do you want me to introduce? No, please go ahead. Okay, so I have Joey with us today. He's our level one uh, student. I'm gonna do a presentation to give a testimonial and talk about their experience. Hi guys, um, um, I'm Joey. I'm, as Andre said, I'm a current level one student. So I started the program just about two months ago. So I was literally in your guys' shoes um, a couple months ago or like last year. 
um, watching these um, info sessions as well. Um, so a little bit about myself is that I was born and raised in Vancouver. Um, I did my bachelor's in biology at UBC, and I've always had an interest um, in working in the med lab since high school. Um, I've actually planned to do this program back in high school, but I just wanted to do my bachelor's first. Um, so I knew, I always knew that BCIT would really prepare me for the workforce a lot more than UBC, because um, UBC is a lot more theory and lecture based. Um, and, and you don't really get that hands-on experience in labs as much as you do here. Um, and I know that BCIT, um, there's a very strong reputation um, for just for like the te technical skills that you learn. And as my time in like the short two months I've been here, like I can really see that. Um, I've also talked to a few med lab alumni from BCIT and they all said that BCIT will prepare you very well. Um, I'm pretty scared with like going into clinicals and all that type of stuff because it's kind of daunting to like go from like you don't know anything to work in the hospital just a straight jump so I talked to them about my fears and stuff and they all reassured me that BCIT uh, would prepare me very well so I found that very reassuring um, so I'm, as you know I'm still new to the program but I can tell there's a lot of differences from like um, here versus university. Um, I think one of the biggest things I noticed is that everyone, like all my classmates and instructors are extremely nice and very supportive. Um, there isn't any competition between each other, which I noticed that, that a lot in, in, in university. Um, because everyone here is here for the same goal to learn and um, be, and, and in the end, just become a great MLT. Um, so everyone who I met, they're extremely nice, supportive, and especially my classmates. Um, we all help each other with homework. Um, if we see someone eating by themselves at lunch, we'll always just invite them um, to eat with us and just get to know them a bit, a bit better. Um, yeah. Um, regarding the course material, um, I feel that the instructors definitely teach what we're, what we're required to know, and they don't really trick us compared to how it was in university where they, where in university um, they'll just teach you a bunch of stuff and like you don't really need to know that so I really appreciate that and um, I appreciate that because um, we do have a really big workload so teaching us what we need to know is really helpful with that um, yeah so also the program is very hands-on um, in level one at least we have three to four uh, days uh, in lab in a week. So I think that's very good with like every day, just um, getting more skills. Um, sorry. <laughs> I think that's just really good because um, every day we can build up on our skills and um, that will eventually prepare us more for like the higher level um, skills that we need to do. Um, so in the future, I hope that I will be able to work in the pathology lab. Um, that's something that really interests me. Um, that I don't think we get to really touch, we don't really get to touch pathology in level one, but um, it's something I'm really excited to learn in level two and three. Um, I'm also exploring the opportunity to do a master's in pathology and apply that back into the lab. Um, yeah. So, if, uh, and if you guys have any questions, um, I will be able to answer that in the chat. Thanks, Joey. That was uh, really informative. And yes, you will get lots of opportunity to practice PATH in level two and three. Um, I should also note that um, all of the curriculum that, they, that the students do take in the program is rooted in the, C, uh, the Canadian Society for Med Lab Science um, competency profile. So there is a national competency profile that talks about what, it is, what are the skills that everybody needs to develop nationwide. Um, and then, so we take those competencies and we integrate them into the curriculum. Uh, we also ensure that we're always talking to our clinical partners and the people in industry to say what's new, what's the latest, um, so that we can use that um, to supplement those competencies and learning out outcomes. So we do try to make sure that we're current, um, but also um, teaching to those competencies so that when you do challenge that national exam at the end of the program, um, you're going to be ready for it. 
Um, okay, so going into admissions, um, well, you can just kind of go along a few of these things together. Uh, next slide. So here's a couple um, key uh, pieces of information here. So the application period is October 1st to May 1st, 2022. Um, so again, uh, that's the window where you're gonna have to get everything ready and uploaded um, by that cutoff point, which is May 1st. Uh, and the program start date is September. Uh, next slide. So um, filling out the application, it's uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, once the application um, opens um, for each cycle, uh, you can log in, review what's, uh, what are the requirements and what needs to be submitted. Um, and then you can fill out that application at your own pace. Um, it does not uh, go to the admissions office until you um, pay for that application fee. Um, and again, just something to be mindful of is the date that you apply, it does not um, have any impact on your application status or anything like that. So um, whether it's at the very end or at the very beginning, it, as long as it's within that window, that's what counts. Um, and you can see here, here's sort of a step-by-step -step process. So you review everything, submit your documents. Um, there's also um, a, a mandatory CASPER and questionnaire that needs to be completed as well. So all of that information is then used for the application for you to apply. Uh, next slide. There is only one intake per year, yes. Uh, okay, so here are the, uh, so these are things you can pick up on the BCIT website when you look at the MedLab Science. So here are the entrance requirements. Please have a look through them to see how they align um, with what you currently have. Um, again, there is a mandatory application questionnaire. So again, make sure you complete that. Um, as well, you can see here at the bottom, it says CASPER. So there is a CASPER test, it's an online test. And it's gonna utilize um, sort of everyday um, situational or judgment scenarios um, or more dilemmas. Um, and then they're gonna present that to you, the test taker. Um, and then you're just gonna respond to that. So there is no right or wrong answer. It's um, just going to be, uh, it's gonna be assessed through that Casper uh, team. Um, and again, there's something to be mindful of is you cannot really study for this test. It, um, it's not knowledge-based. Um, however, there is, um, uh, there, Casper does offer some sample tests. So you can go onto their website and you can find them once you're registered, they'll give you some sample tests that you can complete. And hopefully that'll just get you familiar with this question style and that you'll be more prepared um, for that day. Um, and again, if you do have any questions, you can reach out to the Casper uh, site and their team um, in terms of any question. So it is a third party group uh, that manages all the Casper tests and um, results. So if you do have questions around that testing system, you can email them, contact them, and they will answer whatever they can for you. Okay, um, next slide. All right, so here's when you're submitting your documentation, um, there's a couple of options uh, that are proposed uh, for you. You can either scan or take a picture of the official transcript, upload it, um, download the digital transcript from the school and upload. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of different ways. Ideally, you can see BCIT is kind of leaning towards um, online applications rather than mailing in transcripts. Um, so please take note of that when you are filling out your application. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it for this slide. It's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> um, so the admissions process. So it's, um, it's a step-by-step. -step. So one thing I should mention is that uh, this program, it is a competitive process, which is why there are all these different steps in, the, in place. So once you've um, submitted your application, the program's going to review it at the department level. And then they're going to shortlist um, all the different applicants. Okay, so once you've been shortlisted, you're then going to complete and attend a multiple mini interview. Um, that interview um, is going to be 
basically looking at um, competencies within the med lab science profession, but it's been, but what we've done is we've generalized them to a greater audience. So you don't need to have a lab background, science background to complete any of the activities. Um, so just so you just be mindful of that, we will be training you in all that stuff. So we're not expecting you to have that coming in, but there are some competencies um, that will help you uh, either be successful in the course or uh, in the profession itself. So for example, things like, you know, if you imagine yourself looking down a microscope, you're probably going to have to look at something and, and then convey what you're seeing to maybe a pathologist. Well, we wouldn't ask you to look at a blood smear or anything like that, but, you know, something along those lines of looking at information, transcribing that, and then articulating that to somebody else. So again, having those, those skill sets. Um, so from then, the MMI, we then uh, will make our final selection, and then you'll get a, a, an acceptance letter um, from the office. Uh, that's it. Next slide. All right. So BCIT, they've got lots of different supports to help you um, along your journey. Um, you can see here, there are a number of them are listed for you. Each one of them, you can go even more in depth if you need them, but just know that they are there to help you when you are on campus. So everything for mental wellness, indigenous, uh, financial, um, uh, recreational, all of those kind of things you can, you'll have access to as well as the library, um, and food services as well. So there's lots of, lots of things that you can access when you're here on campus. Um, yeah, so um, please take a chance. If you don't, uh, you can just skim through the BCIT website and you can look through all of those different um, service areas to see you know, what are you interested in or is there something that you'd like to, to, to use or, or whatnot. Um, yeah, so next slide. So laddering opportunities. So there are a lot of opportunities within the profession. Um, so when you graduate with a diploma, um, even, even within the profession, like I mentioned earlier, the career options are, are, are different. You can work in uh, the lab world, the private lab, or public hospitals. Some people go into blood bank research. I've seen some people go into biotechnology um, organizations or industries such as uh, the people that make uh, our instruments that we use. So oftentimes they need lab techs um, to help train and, and be a part of that process. There's also opportunities to get a bachelor's. Um, so if you started, if you came from high school and decided to ladder into a bachelor's, there's options here. If you've completed the program and maybe you find yourself, you know, I'd like to maybe get a leadership experience. You can see that there's a health leadership program here at BCIT as well, or in management. So um, there are different ways to continue your career once you've finished the med lab science program. Um, yeah, and as you just heard from Joey, completely different path than looking at masters in anatomical pathology and just seeing like how can that even build into the into that MLT career. Uh, I think that's it for this one. Um, next slide. So again, if you do have any more questions around the program um, in terms of the details of how it, how to get in, uh, the admissions, all of those kind of things. Um, we encourage you to reach out to Program Advising, um, telephone, email, Zoom, they're there for you. Um, and again, uh, you can see here that they have their office hours available for you. So thank okay. you again. And um, yeah, definitely reach out. Sorry, Andre, on that note, I just want to introduce Jesse if you wanted to add anything on this slide um, and for the next couple on about some of the services that we have at BCIT. Thanks, Julie. So I was just trying to uh, run a response to someone that asked a question there. Um, I'd certainly definitely want to strongly encourage people to make sure that they take a look at our website, uh, simply because these services do tend to change um, and they've been adjusted quite a bit uh, more, uh, more frequently uh, during the pandemic. Um, and we do usually make changes over the summer period. Um, so in case any of you are trying to reach out to us, uh, right now we're really on top of email, um, one of the quickest ways to get in touch with us is certainly through um, our live call periods, um, but then also we are still doing a mix of virtual uh, drop-in services as well as in person. Um, so there's 
some great opportunities that have come about during the pandemic uh, to connect with us in different ways, including virtually. Um, and certainly where you have some really in-depth questions, uh, may, may be easier to ask those directly to us as opposed to within the session today. Um, sometimes uh, more specific uh, scenario questions, for instance, uh, would be better handled uh, directly with an individual advisor um, as opposed to within the tiny bit of chat that we have the opportunity to uh, connect with you uh, during the session today. So thanks so much. I don't know if, I think, Julie, you might, do you still have a slide or two before we get to q and I think? Yeah, okay. Pass it back to you just to comment on those. Okay, everyone, um, you can find us on social media and you can see um, like what we like to share is just what our students are doing, what's happening on campus, new information, pictures about our new building we'd love to share. So if you want to connect with us, find out about projects or, or just stick with the community and, and get to know us, um, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on LinkedIn. And that LinkedIn is where a lot of the students and the graduates um, create profiles to keep connections after they leave the program and remain in contact and build their professional uh, profiles. So uh, we, in addition to that, we also have these links here, um, the tours, spend a day, big info, the info sessions and advising. Everyone's going to receive the slide deck again, so don't don't try and rush to copy this down, or you're going to get this in your email in a couple of days. Um, the next slide after this, sorry, there was one I, I think we skipped over. There it is. That was in a weird spot. Jesse, if you could just talk briefly about some of these um, support services, I think are really important, and then we can jump right into the Q and A. Sure thing. Sorry, just trying to get myself back on video there. So um, when you're looking at VCIT, there's uh, obviously a number of different support services that are available. Um, and I'm just trying to get my notes specific to this. Yeah, so there we go. So um, when you're looking at VCIT, um, one of the services that's available is our Indigenous Services or Indigenous Initiatives Department. Um, so they're there to ensure a smooth transition uh, into your first year if you happen to be of an Indigenous background. So they offer peer-to-peer -peer mentorship a welcoming gathering place, and they provide clarification on Indigenous funding. Uh, there's also the BCIT awards, scholarships, and bursaries that potentially are available to you. Uh, so they're listed on our financial aid and awards uh, webpage. Uh, so there's a specific entrance, sorry, President's Entrance Award uh, that we often mention. Um, and so selection for this uh, funding or this award uh, would be based not only on academic achievement, but also volunteer and community service. So it's important um, to explore the different options that are available within the financial aid department. Um, you don't want to miss out on potentially funding, um, especially where it's a source that you don't necessarily have to pay back, uh, be it through bursary scholarships or awards. Um, and in addition to that, uh, BCT is also committed to providing assistance to students with permanent or temporary disabilities. Uh, so if you've been accepted to a program and believe you may need accommodation to be successful, I would encourage you to connect with the Accessibility Services Department. There's also BCIT Student Health Services, which is a health clinic located at the Burnaby campus. So they would provide medical care for current BCIT students year round. Uh, so certainly go and connect with them, uh, whether you've just taken a tumble on campus or if you've got a specific, uh, you know, if you've got a cough or something else happening, uh, go and visit them there uh, in the uh, same building as the rec services. Um, so they are available to you there as well within the same area as health services um, we have our counseling and student development department um, they would be available to help enhance your educational performance and maximize your success as a student at bcit so things like study habits uh, time management organization skill sets that aren't necessarily always there as you commence your studies at bcit but are very valid and, and helpful um, as you progress towards successful completion and finally, I'll just quickly mention our Recreation Services Department, which promotes, encourages, and enables the practice of physical well-being. Uh, so we, we consider recreation an integral part of campus life, and we welcome all students to enjoy the services that are provided through that department, uh, including myself and some of the staff. We get out and play soccer at lunch uh, where we can, so come and join us. And I think with that, we're ready to go on to questions and answers. Um, I appreciate that everyone's been uh, typing into the chat. 
And I'm just trying to, let me see if I can finish a response to a student here. Um, Julie, I don't know if there's other questions. There was one, there's, there, oh, we have one from Jasmine. Have previous grads ended up working in vet labs? Is this common? It's not really common, no. I mean, okay. some of the equipment is similar, like, but I don't, I don't know of too many grads that have gone on to vet labs. We have a question from Melissa G. Um, thank you for that, Andre. Um, from Melissa asks, in order to obtain work experience, I have considered taking the med lab assistant program at somewhere like BCC and working in the industry for a year before applying to BCIT, would this be beneficial to the application process? Um, it wouldn't, uh, no, in this scenario, uh, it wouldn't benefit the application process. Like it wouldn't make it more competitive. It would just give you more insights into the lab world. Um, so some people I know, uh, they tend to maybe go that route just to, to get their foot in the door, get an experience within laboratory medicine, and then um, maybe they'll come back to do their MLT. So that, that's plausible as well. If you're really going for the MLT profession, um, taking the, the MLA program, it's not, it's not going to help in that competitive process, no. We have one. I know Rachel has her hand up. I have her, Rachel has her hand up, yeah. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, I'm Rachel. Um, I just recently graduated from the MLA program from Camosun in 2021. And I heard a rumor. I think I heard that um, this program that I took, the MLA program, um, can help aid in lessening the course load because I know that there is a collection portion in the course load at BCIT. And I was just wondering if that was accurate. Yeah, so often, um, so you're not alone. The often students, uh, to even that previous question earlier from Melissa, so if you've taken an MLA program, um, some of the courses that you've taken can be used as a credit transfer. Um, what would, there is a process for that at BCIT. You would basically submit your transcripts uh, for that, the courses that you took in relation to the ones that are taught here, and then um, they would get reviewed and approved. So that's kind of how that work. So we could look at some of the work that you've done um, at another institute um, to see if we would provide that credit transfer option. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks, Rachel. That was a great question. Um, we have one for Michelle. Is health sciences math assessment or math pre-calculus math assessment test? That's a lot of assessments. Is health sciences math assessment Oh, Jesse answered her, but maybe if you want to read that out. Uh, or math pre-calculus math assessment test results at VCC acceptable other than the math assessment at BCIT. So Jesse responded to Helena, it's in the chat. Um, as a competitive preference outline for this program uh, is a post-secondary education. The only benefit of attending courses at BCIT over the school district could be where credit-based courses are attended. I want to just peruse the chat, make sure we didn't miss anything. I think you oh. might be missing how is the Casper score weighted? Yeah, from Lyndon Lamb. How is the Casper score weighted? And do we have the dates for the next Casper testing, Candy? Andre, do you know how the Casper testing is weighted or the scores? Uh, you'll get a Z score, which gets sent directly to the program, which then is reviewed. Yep. So it's, it's simply a part of the overall aspect of your competitive application. Um, yeah. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's not necessarily weighted over other aspects necessarily, but they're going to take everything into consideration that you submit yeah. with your application. Exactly. Yeah. Is there, from Rachel asks, is there housing available on campus at BCIT? Yes, there certainly is. We don't, as commonly within these presentations, tend to uh, make comment towards the housing that is available, but there is our residence is located at the Burnaby campus. Um, and so I'd encourage anyone that's interested in looking into housing uh, to make contact with their department directly. How many or percentage of students finished the entire course and graduated among 80 seats? Uh, if I understand that's like how many complete the program? I think that's what she's asking. Um, well, uh, I would say 
on average. Yeah, we're definitely around, say, 73 people like, out of 80. The average might be around 73 people complete the program. Fantastic. Um, Does that help? So, I mean, there is always going to be attrition. It just happens. People come and go all the time. But um, we, what I would offer, maybe not so much as how many people leave the program, but what supports we do have at BCIT. So to Jesse's point earlier, there are a lot of different ways to support students along the way. So if you do find yourself um, maybe struggling um, for whatever reason, um, know that you can reach out to myself, an instructor or somebody, and we can connect you with the right supports. Um, we, the library has peer tutoring, there's mentorship programs, there's all sorts of things um, that, can, that can be uh, tapped into when you're here. Um, so maybe look at it that way is that the majority of our students do complete the program and uh, those that don't, it could be for other reasons as well. We have one more from Fiona. Any reference letters from school work supervisor required? Can they be used as supporting documents? I don't know if you want me to answer that, Andre, or if... You can take the lead on that one. Yeah. So I was going to comment, and I think I might have responded to someone else specific to this. So this program, most uh, there's quite a number of programs competitively within the health science area that do specifically ask for uh, work experience or volunteer experience, and that information is usually drawn, uh, drawn in or provided by the student through a mandatory applicant questionnaire. This program area has chosen not to include that as part of their application process. So they've got a lot of other different areas in the way of academics that they're looking at primarily when selecting uh, competitive applicants. Um, I don't think that Andre necessarily wants to receive multiple uh, different uh, emails from people with respect to reference letters or uh, uh, cover letters or, or uh, CVs, uh, resumes, um, where it's not requested. So uh, it's, it's great. It's great to be able to, to have stand out and say, you know, I've, I've done this through work, um, but obviously their focus tends to be a lot more academically uh, when uh, selecting students for their program. So. Uh, Helena has a great question. How many of the BCIT grads pass? Um, so this is public information. You can go to the CSMLS website and download the national report card. Um, one thing that BCIT does pride ourselves in, the BCIT MLS program is we are one of the largest, we are the largest program in Canada, and yet we maintain the highest pass rate um, as well. So it just kind of demonstrates sort of the quality of the program, even with a, a large number of students. And it's usually above 95% or more. I don't see any other questions at the moment, but I was going to make comment. Um, one of the really important links that you can find on the program page for this program, as well as generally any other program at BCIT, is actually listed below the requirements, and it says read more about how to meet BCIT's entrance requirements. Uh, within that link, you'll find details about equivalencies um, from international high schools, other provinces, um, as, as well as BC. Uh, there's also details about upgrading, there's reference to assessment testing, additional information on clarifying English requirements. So there's a lot of great details that are included within that link. And I would encourage everyone that's looking into this program that may have some questions uh, to take a look at the details in there, and then certainly reach out to us in program advising if you have additional questions that weren't clarified. And I could see another question from Rachel asking if attending the information session is required uh, in order to apply to the program. Um, so her plan is to apply, uh, or uh, Rachel's plan is to apply next year. Um, so it, I don't believe it, it may be something that's encouraged, but I, I don't believe it's a formal requirement um, as it would be outlined on the program page. Um, but certainly it may be recommended uh, to attend the session, certainly. Um, and Monica, with preparation for the CASPER exam, um, if you go onto their website or make contact with CASPER directly, um, I do believe they have a preparatory process. Um, so you'd want to maybe just touch base with them to see if it's a sample-based assessment or if you'd actually have a practice uh, of an assessment that you can proceed with. But my understanding is that there's something available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I 
Thanks, Joey, for commenting on that as well. And I think with that, um, we're ready to end this session. I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Um, Andre for that great presentation. Joey for your insightful look for as a student and taking your time out from your busy workload. I, we really appreciate that. And then Jesse, thank you as well. So if you guys have any questions, please make notes of um, the emails. You're gonna get the slide deck. You're gonna get the recording, reach out to us. And thank you all for taking the time to attend. Yes, thank you everyone. Much appreciated.